Some scholars say that the Bible's record of Christ's teachings is mostly an embellished myth from the imaginations of men. Let's take a break from the race of life and focus on this. If what Jesus said can't be trusted, your soul is in eternal jeopardy. So-called scholars aside, today we'll learn that the accuracy of the written scriptures is guaranteed by the Holy Spirit of God himself. Stay with us. From Chicago's Moody Church, this is Running to Win with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, whose clear teaching helps us make it across the finish line. Today, Erwin Lutzer continues his series on Rumors About Jesus. We're getting truth from 2 Peter chapter 1, debunking the Jesus of the seminar and learning where the Bible's writings really came from. And then he says, for prophecy, verse 20, above all, you must understand that no prophecy of the scriptures came about by the prophet's own interpretation. It doesn't mean that we can't read the Bible on our own. What it means is that, that these prophecies did not come about and originate with the prophet himself. This is explained in verse 21. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of men, but men spoke from God as they were carried along, borne along by the Holy Spirit. Pharaomenoi is the Greek word. It's like a log that is being carried along by a river. They were borne along by the Holy Spirit when they wrote the Scriptures. How different today where you have all of these false prophets on television. Oh, you know, the Lord just showed me something. Oh, guess what Jesus said to me the other day. And then out of their mouths comes things that may be decent, may be good, oftentimes just plain foolish and silly. I've told you the story before, but I'll tell it to you again about the man who wrote to me and said, I can't believe you believe this. And then he quoted me and said that I had said it on the radio and I knew I hadn't said it and I checked it and indeed I hadn't said it. But here's the point. He had taken something that I said and then added this together and put two things together and misquoted me. But if I, as a fallible human being, do not like it when people put words into my mouth, think of how serious it is to put words into the mouth of Almighty God. And it's being done all the time. Listen, when the prophets spoke, they were moved, they were guided. They could use their own styles, their own styles in writing. But God was there to superintend and to guide them so that what we would have is a sure word that shines like a, a sunlight in a very, very dark world. They were moved by the Holy Spirit, were these prophets. Now, what do we make of all this? Two very important implications. Peter says, we saw the Son, we heard the Father, we confirmed the work of the Spirit in the inspiration of Scripture. The whole Trinity was involved here in confirming what we actually saw and what we came to believe. A couple of comments. First, the accounts of the New Testament should be accepted as they stand. We have credible evidence, and there's so many other ways that I couldn't possibly explain to you today, but could in a classroom where we get more technical, as to why we have every good reason to believe that the Bible that we hold in our hands is a reliable book that guides us to God. Now, I have to tell you about religiously liberal people. They really don't know what in the world to do with Easter, which we call here Resurrection Sunday. They have no clue as to what to do with Easter or Christmas. These festivals and times of year bug them. Why? Because for one full year, they can talk about little moralizing ideas. And I've read some of them, and they're almost humorous. But they can talk about, you know, all the goodness of human nature and all these other sweet things. Oh, but when Easter comes, you have to preach on the resurrection. And what do you say about it if you don't believe it? You have to come up with something. <laughs> Los Angeles, a few years ago, where the pastor always put his sermon topic on the marquee. The marquee was, Easter is a time for flowers. 
Wow. I feel blessed already, folks. <laughs> what do you do with these stories? Last Christmas, a well-known minister here in Chicago said, and I'm paraphrasing, I tried to find the quote but couldn't, but this is a rather accurate paraphrase. Now, now when it comes to camels and, and stars and, uh, and angels, do we believe these records? The question was asked. Well, that's not the important thing as to whether or not they happen. What really matters is the spirit of Christmas, which is about like saying in Alice in Wonderland, you know, it really doesn't matter whether or not the Cheshire Cat existed. What really matters is its smile. That's the important thing. It's the smile of the Cheshire Cat. Listen to me. If we can't believe angels and stars and wise men, if we can't believe that, then there's really no compelling reason to believe the cross and to believe the resurrection, and we are, of all men and women, most miserable. It all hangs together. You can't pick and choose. If Jesus wasn't laid in a manger like the New Testament says, how do we know that he was nailed to a cross? So that's the first point. The accounts of the New Testament have to stand and be accepted as they stand because they're credible eyewitness accounts. There's a second point, and that is we disbelieve to our own destruction. We disbelieve to our own destruction. Now, all of you have Bibles, of course. Thank God that everybody who comes to Moody Church brings a Bible. <laughs> Let me change that and make it a little bit more accurate. Everyone who comes to Moody Church should bring a Bible, all right? But look at what Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 3. He's talking about the day of the Lord, and it is almost chilling where everything is going to be destroyed, the elements are going to...